Here's the easiest job in the whole world. A side respray on the ugliest van ever made. So easy, so quick. And the guy even did all the work for me. I just gotta pull the trigger. Did I mention this guy did it himself? He said it was ready to paint and 600 sanded down to. And he's had his own business for 40 years but's retired. So this just turned into a what not to do. He didn't even sand up here. So that means the paint will fall off in two days. And I don't know if he expects me to paint over this glue here. But, so make sure you sand every freaking square inch where you want paint to stick. It's going to be a joy painting these handles. Always remove everything you can. Look at the shine in there. It's really actually a bad idea to wet sand and paint in the same day. Because all of that shit will get in the cracks. But uh, I don't really have much choice today. So make sure you stay away from all these cracks and don't let the water get in there. That's why I didn't mask down the bottom yet. Because when you go to paint, all these things have to be blown out perfect. Otherwise you're just wasting your time. So if there's water in there, you're really wasting your time. Here's a big no-no. If you're bringing a car to somebody, don't drive and dog shit a block away before you get there. And if it wasn't such a quickie, I might actually care, but it'll be out of here in two hours. So he can drive home with dog shit on his tire. Did I mention you have to sand every square inch probably three or more times? And what you use will depend on the job. But if it's body work, you might have to start with 36 and all the way up to 600, I guess. If it's paint, you might want to start on 320 and end up at 600. Either way, you got to do a lot of sanding. Make sure you mask every square inch of the vehicle because poly's cheap and painted rubber and overspray is very frustrating. It takes a lot of time to get it off. So don't cheap out on the plastic and save yourself time in the end. Trust me. Of course there's always a part two and that's this bumper. And again I didn't do anything, this is the way I got it. But it ends here. So what do we do about it? Because I definitely don't want to paint the whole damn bumper. Well first step is to make sure it's totally spotless and clean. To alleviate that situation we need to make a soft line. But this is a really poor example and it's kind of hard to do it on a bunch of curves like this. And I want to get this thing out of here in an hour so I don't really care. But if you were doing it on a real good car you might want to spend a bit more time. But that's about it. Here's a better idea. Put the tape on halfway and stick some of these little tabs down. Then you can fold it over and make a nice soft edge when you paint. This is a pretty bad example, but I'm truly in a hurry. On a normal car or high quality job, you probably want to sand all the way right up to the tape with 600. And that way when you're done, you can sand in your new paint into the old stuff, polish up the whole thing and you'll never know it's there. But I ain't doing none of that stuff for this, so I gotta kind of fake it a bit and just leave some overspray on the old paint. So, another way to cut a corner. Now, I normally wouldn't use these cups, but if you're just starting out, I recommend it. There's lots of different scales on them, but we'll just worry about the 4 to 1 to 1 right now. This stuff, you're supposed to mix 4 to 2 to 1. So, I already filled it up to the 10. You have to figure out on the right hand how much paint you want as a finished product and then you go back to the left side and fill up your first one, the paint, to that number and then you go to the middle one and you fill it up to the middle one this is one so you go up to the next ten in the middle now the next part is actually two parts to the other and of course the cup only goes four to one to one so you have to be smarter than the cup Obviously if it's one to one, you just add two parts. So instead of filling it up to the 10, I have to take it to the 11. That gives us two parts. And that's all there is to it. Don't be so stupid and leave the paint in the vehicle and then mask it all up. And then I left the keys in the van, 
so I had to break the poly to get the keys out. So I polyed it all up, and then I realized these stupid vans only have one keyhole on the whole vehicle. So I had to bust through the poly again to unlock all the doors. What a joke. But if you mask it right, it shouldn't be a problem. Unless you're painting your crazy Uncle Bob's combine, it's a good idea not to cheap out. So get a tack cloth and use it right before you paint. Otherwise you get all sorts of little shit in the paint and you'll be really upset. Just when you think it's ready to paint and you think it's all clean, clean it again. Because just because you don't want to clean it doesn't mean it's clean, if that makes sense. And all those cracks have to be blown out and it has to be totally dry. But it's a good idea to wet the floor if you can. The only problem is then you drag your hose in it and water can splash up into your paint. So you got to be careful. There's a lot of little things that can screw up and wreck your paint job. So you have to be at an almost 96% perfection rate to make it look good. There's two things that help make a beautiful paint job. And that's experience and a high quality gun. And this one preheats the air and the paint evidently. And it lays it on like glass and super smooth and super efficient. So it really is important. The idea is to spray it on very thin, many multiple coats, especially with modern day shitty waterborne paint. So wait till the last coat or two to put it on thicker, otherwise you'll have runs from hell, especially around these door handles. You definitely want to take it easy. Always use a screen when painting, they're very affordable and they do a wonderful job. the first coat and you can see how light it is probably not on the screen but just make sure you don't pile it on too thick and always start with your edges spray them first then you blend in the whole middle that way you don't have to go back at the end to do the edges and screw up your paint the key is patience here you probably spent days getting to the paint stage if not longer so now is the time to take it slow let the paint tack up in between coats and it's honestly better to put six coats on than three even if it takes you twice as long because in the end you'll be fixing a lot more mistakes on those three coats this I promise this gun is awesome but of course you need the compressor to back it up so if you have a tiny compressor it ain't gonna do you no good so you gotta step up to the big league for everything this is definitely not a video on proper spray techniques because that could honestly take a half an hour or more because there's a lot of steps in everything but the ideas are there so this is coat 2 only I'm shooting for about 5 maybe and then probably 3 clear probably 2 only so hang in there it's strongly recommended that you throw away any extra bits of paint because now is not the time to be cheap. So if you try to use every last bit, you'll probably just cause a run or make a mistake. So it's honestly better to throw it away. And here we are, finally ready for the clear. So let's get mixing. Same thing goes for the clear. It's 4 to 1 again, but it's only 2 parts, so you don't need that outside column. So I decided I need 10 parts. So at the middle column, I went to 10, and as you can see on the outside column, the clear is up to about 10, so now you just add to the top. Very simple, but I probably made it sound confusing. The activator for the clear is like reducer, it comes in slow, medium, and hard, so pick the one that best matches your weather, usually medium is fine. The clear is the make it or break it stage, so take it slow. Watch how it flows on, and make sure you don't do runs. But they're easy to fix though. This is the first coat only. I like to put it on in two thick coats, but it takes a bit of skill. It's even way more important to throw away the extra clear, because you don't want to screw up right now. Just using this little bit of clear in there, you could cause huge runs in the worst place at the last step on the last part of the paint job 
and you literally gotta wait days for it to dry to fix it. And if you do it enough, you could really wreck the whole side of the car. So throw away the extra clear. And there it is, good to go. It's probably a good idea to remove all the tape and maskings before the paint dries. Check out all the other vids for real paint jobs. Lots more coming too. Here's one I never got to finish though. Don't know how I get into these messes, but this is the next project. A very quick one. I went to the supply store and the Japanese guy who owns the place, if he's good all year, I let him drive my car. So I gave him the keys and he was gone for 10 minutes. And as I was waiting, this guy comes in this van and basically follows me here and makes me do the work. But he's already paid and it's easy. So the new mess of the day, just what I have time for. So I guess now I'm doing vans. Now the poor Triumph is sitting out here dying. Now this is a totally sexy selling feature. I wonder if that's stock. I don't know what you use that for. I guess you plug that into there. This is what happens when you fill your Dodge Boogie van with Bondo. It doesn't last. So, if you want it to actually be fixed, you gotta find the root of the problem and why it started in the first place. Otherwise, it's just gonna come back in a week, a month, a year, a day. And this guy actually bought the whole panel to put in there and he wanted to glue it in on top of this shit. So, this is a super temporary fix. This is just some of the junk you need, even when half ass in a vehicle. And if you want to do a good job, you honestly need twice as much. So that's why it's so expensive to do anything. It's a lot easier to sit on the couch and do nothing. Here's the front pieces hanging out in the oven here, drying. That is bright white. Now we have one front end perfectly aligned, bumper pushed back up, hood and fender and filler piece painted. Time to get this nightmare out of here. <laughs> 